I mean, it is right saying there are free F5 commanders available and the new Spearwife troop appearance skin in this event. Being a bi-weekly running along with Bounty, they'll cycle between each other, and maybe newer events will be added into the mixture. But is the carriage event fun? Oh, come on, you really think I'd praise this event. But there is something special from here currently exclusive that is great for just about any account. Probably the only reason most will want to click on this event icon. I will talk about those soon, so why don't I explain how the event works quickly? In short, you get to set up four carriages per day which travel through your kingdom's map. They all have different timers till they can be claimed, and the higher quality will have much better items. You can get, as previously mentioned, Spearwife Troop Appearance Medals, F5 Commander Medals, along with unique chests, blood diamonds, T5 books and combat manuals as well. These cards can be plundered though, so you will be using your strong commanders and troops to defend these. You can only use these commanders once per cart, and will need to finish the current one before using them again, so just consider that. The same goes for plundering enemy carts, you will scout out the enemy and send your army to plunder. You won't receive any losses in the battle, and once successful you will take a mix of loot from their cart. Up to 50% of their cart can be plundered or two attacks in total. You cannot choose which treasures you get, nor can your armies protect set loot from your own carts. So I bring into question what is the point of re-rolling which costs 2,000 diamonds itself. It is similar to bounty, but the diamond amounts you will get is pathetic compared to bounty event. But this isn't event you play for diamonds and seriously. Why do you re-roll in this event, unless you're a whale lover and need to feed your senpai daddy quality loot like the good little pilot you are? Then I say don't bother, rely on what you get from re-roll. And I think that has been the mentality that has come up over time. Less and less quality chariots have been coming up since the start, and in my opinion you should at least be able to know beforehand which items will be protected and which can be plundered. Just a bit of a quality of life for the players. But there is plenty of reason to at least play this event. The chests and the all-new motivation, or more accurately rebel badges, are currently exclusive to this event. Talking about the chests now, we have commander chests, dragon chests, and weapon chests. The most valuable out of these are the weapons chests having Jean and Russell's weapon fragments available here, and not needing to wait on glorious battle or alliance mobilization for them. These are just passive stat weapons, but you also have Melisandre's weapon here, though only being too per chested is going to be a painful grind for free-to-play players. The purple quality version of this just has lower amounts of weapon reroll, and locking ores along with purple quality weapon chests which are more likely to give green to purple basic weapons over the gold unlike in these gold chests. But for most players, I would probably say just go for the reroll in either of the chests and try get better stats on your weapons than trying to grind up Russell or Jean's weapons. Next is the dragon chests, which, oh wow, they just made the dragon awakening much easier. I was gonna make a video upon how painful that grind is, and I probably still will. Anyways, the dragon chests give blessing stones, awakening essence, but more importantly, XP scrolls for your dragon skills, absolutely insane that these are available, sort of make me worried there will be something new coming with dragon skills like some type of new level or worse skill awakenings. Even so this is more personal if you want to level your dragon awakening or your dragon skills, these are your best options. The blessing stones are an option if you're like me and can't get the seventh skill unlocked on your first dragon. And lastly, the commander chests. Did I ever say they have been making these commanders more and more accessible for lower spending and free to play players? Be aware that little Bob Hoff account will soon slam you with a full-on female lineup soon. It's normal for the game to add more free, or at least cheaper methods for older content, and here in the purple quality chests you can get two outstanding and one elite commander chest, with the gold chest giving three outstanding. Two elite and one extraordinary, or if you're feeing spicy there are legendary awakening tokens. The suggestions of what to get is standard in every alliance chat, Oh, you should get Theon for Rebels, or you should get... Yes. Shut up, man! As a whole, choose which commanders you want. Just be aware to maximize them, you'd need other commanders. Jamie needs a healer commander, Layla needs other female commanders, and Sonara has her own bakery. Wow, man. Uh... Damn. Oh, you want to hear about the other commanders? Sure, Andrea is a man. Hector is a mountain goat. <laughs> Liana is the Chinese Kasana. Mara is a blonde. Who even likes Melisandre, she does fire stuff in the show, I don't know. Annie is a lully. You know what I am thinking. Salma has jiggle physics. 
Enzo just an old man, Lats is just Arya but grown up and Rhea is hot. Oh, and Patalo's father has something to do with elephants. Marg pretty hot too, it's a shame she's pointless in the show beyond viewer retention. We still talking about these chests. Yeah, they're cool, you should get them. But geez, you stayed this long for the rebel badges. Well, here they are, these are the max stats, cool. Uh, yeah, good luck getting them by.